Hi, my name is Percy and I'm a control engineer at Deep Robotics. Today I'm going to teach you guys how to train an I.O. policy from scratch to control a Light 3 quadruped robot. First, we'll start by installing ISAC Lab. ISAC Lab is built by NVIDIA and is currently the most popular simulator for robotics around the world. To start installing ISAC Lab, we are using an Anaconda virtual environment and we will work on that. It's very easy to install an Anaconda virtual environment. We simply just copy and paste the command and let it run. And here we have our virtual environment. After that, we need to install PyTorch for CUDA acceleration. You can also install PyTorch on the PyTorch official website if you have more up-to-date GPUs like 1590. Their code may install like a more up-to-date version of CUDA and PyTorch. But here, we'll, I'm going to use the command here on their official website because it's enough for me. Okay, after installing PyTorch, we can start installing Isaac Sim. It's very simple, we just copy and paste this one line command and you will start installing. It may take some time, but uh, we just let it run. After installing Isaac Sync, we need to verify the installation. We can simply just type Isaac Sync here and type yes. And if you guys can see this empty window pops up, uh, that means your Isaac Sync has been successfully installed. The first time startup is going to take some time. Uh, I have already run Isaac Sync multiple times here, so it's pretty fast for me. Now we can start installing Isaac Lab. First, let's click clone the code from the repo to our local computer. And let's install some build essentials. Oops, we need to fix some broken dependencies. Okay. Now we just use the use their script to install it isaaclab.sh install we'll just let it run so there may be some bugs coming up but it's totally fine okay now we have installed isaaclab let's verify the installation Also, if you guys can see this empty window pops up, it means that Isaac Lab has been successfully installed. And we can also use Isaac Lab to train a simple robot. We will choose the Isaac's end example here to see whether we can start training. Okay, so now you guys can see the code is starting to run and we are currently training an Isaac M robot. And now we will start diving into our Life 3 training code. Okay, so let's go to our Deep Robotics GitHub Center and go to this IO training repo. First, let's git clone the code to our local computer and install this package. To verify the installation, we can use this line of code to list the environments. If you guys see these four environments, it means your our training code has been successfully installed. And now we can start training our Light 3 robot. We just use this command, specify the device. And the code is starting to train. Now the training has finished and we can check what we got from the results. So let's go to the logs folder and go to this RSLRL, Deep Robotics Live 3 Rough. We can use TensorBoard to check the training process. Just type TensorBoard log direct directory and just click this link and we can see the training process. 
smooth, smooth the curve, reload data, and increase the number of reward components. So there is, uh, there are many reward components here because the reward functions consist of different reward, com different parts of the rewards. We'll dive deeply into this in the next video. Okay, so now we can we can also check the training results uh, uh, visually and in an interactive way. Just copy this command, type keyboard so we can inter interact with it. And you can also specify which checkpoint we want to use. We're going to choose the last checkpoint. So the default number of epochs we train is 20,000. And you guys can change it if you want to train, uh, train it more. And now here's a small Light3 robot here. You just click console and uh, we can start controlling the robot. Oops, this is not working well. And so now you guys can see that the Light3 robot can be controlled to traverse on uneven terrains. Uh, in Isaac Lab simulation. And it's working pretty well. Now we can also control it to traverse on some stairs, but um, this is a very simple policy. It is only for tutorial purposes. Uh, this, this, the performance is not that good, so of course it just kind of falls to the ground. So this, is, this part is called sim to sim test. It is very necessary before you deploy the robot, deploy the policy into the real robot. Uh, you need to check whether the API is correct, whether you send the correct data. Otherwise, if you just like send a very large target, it's going to burn the motors or it's going to cause some very dangerous behavior. So it's very necessary, very important to do the sim to sim uh, process. After playing Isaac Lab autonomously, just export the policy as an Onyx file. We're going to use this Onyx file on the real Light 3 robot. It is also very easy to use this Onyx file. We can just copy and paste this policy to the IO deploy folder, which we'll go back, which we will dive into later. We just checked the train policy in Isaac Lab. Now we're going to check it in uh, in the Magical simulation because um, we built our Magical simulation to have the exact same API as the real robot. Uh, if it, if the robot in Magical simulation can move uh, normally as expected, it won't cause any like dangerous behaviors in the real system. So this part is called sim to sim test. It's very important and it's very important for safety. Before deploying, before doing the sim to sim test, I want to introduce a very useful tool. It is for segmentation fault. So when working with C++, working with C, uh, sometimes we just get a segmentation fault and we don't know where the bug is coming from. This tool can tell you which function in which file causes the problem. And to install this function, it's very easy. We simply just copy these commands and uh, start installing. And our, our code has already integrated with it. So if you install this tool and run our code, it, the, our code will just auto autonomously use this tool. Afterwards, let's install PyBullet and Magical. I, I created a contact environment to work with. And it's just uh, to separate it from other code. Okay. Oh, I have already have a light rerun IO deploy. Let's just remove it and start over again. Let's click git clone it recursively because we have a lot of third parties for communication with the hardware uh, for UIDF models. So it's a, it's a pretty complicated code. Okay, now let's go into our Light3 IO deploy folder and just make build folder and go to it. Let's check the CMake uh, flags. We'll also dive deeply into the, the meaning of this code, the meaning of the flags. Uh, but in this video, we're just going to run the process so you guys can deploy it. And we'll start compiling. So the compiling has succeeded. To run the code, to run the program, to run the executable program, 
uh, we need to open two terminals. So in the first terminal, let's go to the simulation and uh, run our magical simulation file, Python file. <coughs> And in, other, in the other terminal, we run our executable IO deploy file. So we also have this uh, nice colorful debugging information in Magical. Uh, it will print it out uh, per one FPS. You guys can uh, debug it if, you didn't, if the sim to sim test didn't go very well. And to control the robot in Magical, First, press Z to enter stand-up mode. The robot will just stand up by itself. And then press C to go into IO control mode. <coughs> now we can start controlling the robot with our keyboard. So now we can just press WASD to control it to move around and Q and E to control it to make turns. And we can also control it to go upstairs. It works pretty well in the simulation, at least for now. But usually the stairs seem to real gap, and in the real robots, it doesn't work as smoothly as this. This is the package of a Life 3 quadruped robot. This is the charging base. This is the charger and this is the cable. You can connect them like this. And here's the Light 3 battery. You can just put it there and it will start charging. This is the retray gamepad. We're going to use this to control the robot. Here are some, pad, some parts for the foot pad of the quadruped robot. If it's broken, you can just use it to replace it. And this is the Light 3 robot. Here's the battery. To get the battery out of the robot, you should lift it up a little bit. And there's a button there. And just put your fingers at the bottom and click it. The battery will just slip out. And to put it back, just simply do that. Okay. To, to, start, the battery, to start the robot, just short click and long click the battery. And if you see the lights of the head is starting to turn blue, it means the robot has, uh, uh, has been started. The next step is to connect both the laptop and the gamepad to the robot. Uh, the, you can find the name of the Wi-Fi from the bottom. You can just flip it and you can see it. And we're going to connect it with the Wi-Fi. The password is usually 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And we have already connected. We also need to connect the gamepad to the Wi-Fi. Okay, we have connected both of them. So the next step is to transfer the files and the policy to the robot. We have already done that. If you guys haven't, you can use SCP file to transfer the files to, to, the, to the robot. The password is a single quote. So now let's just enter the the onboard computer by using SSH. Okay, now we... And to run the file, so we have already finished compiling. Uh, if you guys haven't, just follow the readme command and you will use that uh, CMake flags and start compiling. After that, just run the IO deploy file exactly the same as sim to sim. So you can see the robot is starting to move. The default uh, controlling of the robot is to click this one to stand up and to click this one to enter IO control mode. Okay, so now we are inside IO control mode. Let's take it for a walk. So you can use the joystick to control it.
and you can also traverse on uneven terrains as where we are trained on so this is very normal to happen when it happens it will just enter a safety mode you can just uh, take it up put it on a flat terrains put the legs like this uh, okay we better like there's a slope here just in the same way control it to stand up enter the aisle control mode okay now we can just control it to walk back so the performance of this policy is not very good it's only to uh, give you guys a tut tutorial to know how to control the robot you can also let it go upstairs a little bit So it can uh, go over like one or two stairs, but uh, the policy is not trained to go over multiple stairs at the same time. So if you guys remember in the sim to sim test, there are some stairs that the robot can go up to. Now we're going to see whether it can go up in the real in the real world. So as you guys can see, it cannot go up. Uh, this is very normal because the sim to real gap is definitely bigger than the sim to sim gap and Mojuko simulator it doesn't have any noise doesn't have any uh, turbulence so it is uh, very clear that the sim to real gap is going to be bigger and this is very normal to happen so this is the end of the tutorials uh, good luck with your own robot development thank you